Hello everyone and welcome back for another edition of Virtual Yin Yoga. I'm your instructor Mike and I'm happy to have you all with me this evening. Uh, what I was thinking about doing for this particular practice is a hip series. The last time I taught this practice it was more of a spine series. So I wanted to focus a lot of on this effort on the pelvis, on the SI joints, uh, the femur, your big leg bone, right? There's going to be a lot that we do here with the hips. We'll work the back a little bit as well, but we're going to say primarily this is going to be focused on our hips because most people will have issues with their hips at some point in their life. Uh, but before we get started, uh, feel free to grab any props that you may need. Sometimes you may want to have a, a yoga block if you happen to have one. Uh, if you don't have one, pillows are always a great substitute for that. Sometimes, very rarely, uh, you might need like a strap or something like that. What I often find is easier than a strap is to use like a hand towel. It serves the same purpose and can also be used as a cushion. For some people, laying on their back can really aggravate their lower back or their neck. So you could always kind of roll it up, put it under your neck, put it under your back for some cushion. Uh, whatever you feel like you need, uh, just go ahead and grab those props and let's go to work. And when you're ready, again, no rush, but at some point I'm going to have you laying on your back. When you're laying down, go ahead and close your eyes because there's nothing to see. At this point, just more to feel and pay attention to. And I always want you to pay attention to your breath. Throughout the course of the practice, I want you to pay attention to it and do the breathing technique that's called belly breathing. And belly breathing, if you're not quite sure what it is, place a hand on your stomach below the belly button. You'll feel the stomach expand when you take an inhale. It will contract when you take an exhale. Again, this is belly breathing. It's a breathing technique that I recommend for this practice because it's a slower paced practice and we want to slow the body down. Breathing low, your diaphragm is going to make that happen. It slows the heart down, slows the nervous system down. It slows the mind down. And again, what we're doing here is a yin yoga practice. Yin yoga is a very gentle and passive style of yoga where you're holding slow static postures for an extended period of time to stretch the body. It's not just about stretching the muscles though. We're going to stretch what's called our connective tissues. Connective tissues are the deeper tissue. It's what holds the muscles, the bones, and the organs in place and in line. It's a really important thing to work. A lot of us are just unfamiliar with how to do it. But how we do it is by holding poses for a while. And we're talking roughly three to four minutes with each individual pose. It could be a long time, and I understand that. So if your better judgment leads you out of something early, that's fine. You don't have to hold the pose the entire time. But if you feel comfortable, you want to hold it the entire time, or maybe even a little longer, it's up to you. But my advice to you is to let experience be your guide. Let your body tell you what you need to do. But during the hour, if you find out that you're struggling, listen up to the modifications that I will suggest. I'll be throwing a, a lot of options out there for you, so you can kind of pick and choose what works best for you. But my advice to you, again, is to let experience be your guide. Let your body tell you what you need to do. When you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. We're going to start this off loosening up the hips and spine. Go ahead and lay on your back. If you're already there, you're already where I want you. But bring the knees up to the chest, cradle your legs. I want you to rock up and down on your spine, side to side, make circles. Uh, crack the back if you can. If not, you know, no worries. It's totally fine if you can't. Just one of those bonuses for you. And again, this is just to loosen up your hips and spine some gentle movement. Honestly, this is one of the first ways that I, that I wake up my back and my hips in the morning. You know, when I'm laying in bed, I'll just bring my knees to the chest for a moment, cradle around, move around. And then when I feel like I've loosened up enough, usually after a minute, I'll get up and start moving. So like I said, I was thinking about doing a hip series for this practice. And with the hips, we're talking the pelvis, SI joints, shorts on the back of the hip, 
uh, femurs, big leg bones, right? A lot of things are gonna be taking place here. We'll, we'll throw in some spine, but mostly hips today. So what we're gonna do, starting it off with a twist, reclining twist. You're gonna take your legs over to a side. I'm going left here, just so we're on the same page, if you wanna be on the same page as me. So if you're going left in your twist, it's lower right side of the back, that's the intended area. Broad stretch on the right side of the body. But something that you might notice here, maybe you're not really feeling that broad side body stretch. You feel it more in the back of your hips. Or maybe you're just noticing you can't really get your knees together or you can't get the legs to the floor, right? This is where I would suggest using a block or a pillow. Put it right in between the knees, put it under the bottom leg, do both if you need it. You never know, if you need both, go for it. But wherever you need to be, broad side body stretch here. Now if you're comfortable, you could throw in some bonuses like arms out to the T, get your chest and shoulder open. Uh, you can have arms above your head, get more oblique and side body stretch. Sometimes you get the triceps too. Arms though, 100% up to you. They're not really a part of this particular practice. Now in any other practice, I would say go for it, but it's, it's your choice. And if you wanna stretch your neck, some people will, they're gonna look away from the legs. So again, my legs are going left. If I turn my head to the right, it's gonna turn into a neck stretch here. But since I'm teaching, I want to face you. I want to be able to see everybody, right? If you want to increase the stretch for the back and for the hips to rotate your hips more into it, this is optional, but this is uh, something you might want to try. Take your top leg over your bottom leg. So again, in this case, it's my right leg coming over the left. And the more my right leg crosses over, the deeper the pelvis rotates into it. So you can see here how deep the pelvis is turning with the top leg going over versus just with the knee stack, right? There's a lot of pelvic rotation here, but there's gonna be more here. Up to you, right? It's not a requirement to go as deep as possible. This is just an option for you. If you feel like you're just not getting enough out of this, please consider trying it out. But if it turns into too much, your body's gonna tell you in two ways. One, you're, uh, you're gonna notice your muscles start flexing, like your core, your back, your glutes, they all start tightening up on you. Your body going too far, it will tell you that. Another sign is if you're starting to feel burning localized pain right here in the back of your hips. If you're feeling anything in the back of the hips, directly in the SI joint, dial this back. Please understretch, right? Don't overdo it. I try to give you the scale of stretching early in practice, you know, between one and 10. 10 is your deepest stretch. If you're going for around six and seven, you're less likely to overstretch. You're more likely to relax. You get this nice moderate stretch where it's not too much and it's not too little. Again, that's subjective and it requires us to kind of experiment, but try to find that sweet spot where you get a nice effective stretch without going too far. When you're ready, no rush, no hurry. You can go ahead and slowly unwind from the twist. Right? Take your time on out of that. So you lay down for a moment, knees bent, feeling the floor is fine, or you could straighten your legs, just wherever you're comfortable. Right? But take a moment, right? really just observe what you went through. other side and if you're on the same page as me it's okay if you're not but if you are we're going to the right now so knees up to the chest legs to the right you're gonna lay them on the floor right this is your pose right now but with it again two sides are different probably get here and notice that just right off the bat like oh you know I, I can't really go so far on this side I can't get my knees together I can't get my legs to the floor I'm feeling that burning localized SI joint pain right here in the back of my hips if that's the case Use the block or the pillow, put it in between your knees, put it under the bottom leg, do both. You never know, right? If you need it, go for it. But you might also notice that this side has a little bit more of an increased range of motion. Maybe you're noticing, you know what, I'm comfortable here. Go ahead and stay there. Or you can play around with the 
modification of taking your top leg over the bottom leg, but we'll get there after I mention the bonuses. But some people probably did arms out to the T for the chest and shoulder opener. Again, more left shoulder getting this one now. Or arms above the head for oblique and side body stretch. Triceps sometimes too, right in the back of the arms. If you stretch the neck, you're going to look away from the legs. So again, just for the example, legs going right, you got to look left to hit the neck. But again, since I'm teaching, I'm going to be looking at the camera here, right? So the intention, again, is the left side body. Broad stretch here, sometimes the outside of the left leg, your IT band. Something else that we're going to focus on, too, is the IT band. Uh, we'll get the hip flexors as well. We'll probably do a little bit um, for the inner thighs, very mild for the hamstring. Um, but, you know, we'll see how it goes as we go along. The last thing to modify, though, is the position of the top leg. Keeping your knees stacked is fine, but if you need more, top leg goes over the bottom leg. So again, in this case, it is the left leg going over the right to feel a little bit more of that side body stretch to have more pelvic rotation, right? There's just a, a deeper turn here, and it might be necessary. It might not be. If it's too much, back off. Knee stacked is fine. Not enough, keep going, right? Two sides are always going to be different. And it's not just because of flexibility, it's part of it, but the other part is because you're asymmetrical with your skeleton, right? The two sides of your body are not shaped the same. You have different uh, shapes when it comes to your actual bones. So don't worry about alignment. Perfect alignment does not exist. What we focus on, and that's all we care about, is functional perspective. Do I feel the stretch itself? We'll say if you're ready. Here's your time. Slowly unwinding from your twist. Take your time on out. Just lay down for a moment. You can cradle legs or just lay flat, knees bent, feeling the floor. You just, whatever works for you. Take a moment. The next target area we're going to focus on is going to be the IT band. This is your iliotibial band. It runs from ilium to tibia to be a broad stretch on the outside of your leg. So whatever leg you're going to stretch, it's the outside of it. But if it's in your knee that you're feeling or your hip inside or outside, um, please listen up to some modifications. I can help you work around that. But I'm going to give you two poses. One of them is called eye of the needle. And this is where you got to use a little bit of muscular effort. And with it, you're going to lay on your back. You're gonna cross a leg over. Just for the example here, I'm gonna cross my right leg over and have my right foot resting on my left knee. Some people actually can sit here and feel this. Others are gonna need some effort here, some muscular effort. So you can take your hands. One goes through the little hole here, why they call it eye of the needle. The other wraps around, but both grab the shin of the left leg if that's the side you're on here. So you pull this a little bit, right? The more you pull, the more you get for your right leg's IT band. So that's one option here for you. And one of the beauties of doing this pose, using muscular effort, if it's not enough, keep pulling. Too much, let it go, right? Or you can just let it go and be right out of the pose. So it's one of those safer options. But you could also do the swan pose, we call it pigeon. That just depends on the style of yoga that you're doing at the time. And with it, I'm gonna continue being on my right side here. So you got one leg out in front, you got your right leg out in front if you're here. Uh, you could have the shin parallel with your mat if you got one, if not, you know, don't worry about it, but you could bend your knee as well, bring your foot in close to your groin. So whatever protects your hip and knee, that's what you need to do. And then you lean forward. Back leg can be adjusted. It can be perfectly straight behind you, or you can bring your back leg around you to the side. It plays around with the angle of the pelvis. When the back leg starts coming around to the side, your front hip turns out more. So your right hip or whatever hip it is, the front one can turn out and lay on the floor. For a lot of people, it's not gonna happen, with the back leg straight behind them. So if you're noticing that, it's really not abnormal. But if you have the back leg straight behind you, 
your hip is close to the floor, you're feeling plenty of that broad stretch, then you're, you're good to go, right? You're golden. It's wherever you need to be. And remember to breathe. Those deep inhales, those deep exhales, really sink into the pose. Let the body relax. Let your muscles soften here. That's the physical sign that you're relaxing, when muscles can soften. If they're flexing, they're tightening, they're engaging, right? That's a physical thing. That's too active. And we want to be inactive. We want to be passive with this style of practice. When you're ready, I'm going to say it's time, just real slow. Path of least resistance. If that's swan pose, push up, roll out, maybe lay down. If you're an eye of a needle, again, you just let that go, and you're out of the pose. But take a moment here. Lay down, feel the difference between the two. Right? We've only worked that one side. I'm sure it feels different. When you're ready, other side. Uh, whatever side you happen to be on for this one. Um, but if you're on the same page as me, I think we're all on the left side here. So you're gonna lay on your back. If you're doing eye of the needle, cross your left leg over. You'll have your left foot on your right knee, right? So it's gonna be the left leg getting his stretch here because you're crossing that one. You take one hand, it's gonna be your left hand. It will thread the needle, go in between the legs. The right hand will reach around but both are going to grab onto the shin of the right leg and you're going to pull this, right? You're going to have some muscular effort. So if you're not getting enough, keep pulling too much, let it go. Maybe even just rest your foot on the floor here. So again, whatever really works for you, just go ahead and do that because I personally don't know what that is for you. That's why I give you those options. But another thing for you here, swan pose. You know, when you got the one leg out in front, you got the one leg behind, and you're leaning forward into it. But two sides are different. You'll probably play around with the alignment. You know, maybe on this side, you have to have your front shin basically parallel to the top of the mat. Or maybe not, maybe you gotta bend the knee, bring your foot in close to your groin. Whatever's trying to protect your hip and knee, do that, right? And then the back leg, we had mentioned too, it could be straight behind you, or you could bring your back leg around you to the side for some more external rotation. Uh, sometimes that increases the intensity of the pose, sometimes it does the exact opposite and it decreases. It's one of those things you, you never really know until you try it out for yourself. So give it a shot and right? see which one works best for you. But make sure you're not feeling any pain in the knee or in the hip. Anything that's localized like that is overstretching. It is 100% guaranteed to be overstretching. Please, please, please don't do that because I don't want you to hurt yourself. Right? People, people push that all the time. I understand why new students do it too. You know, when you're a new student and you hear stretching, usually the first things that come to mind is, okay, stretch as far as possible, right? Logically, that makes sense because we want to increase flexibility. Don't do that, you're gonna hurt yourself. The other thing is, when they feel a pain directly in their joint, they'll think to themselves, oh, I must be really tight in this joint. I must be stretching it very effectively. When in fact, you're over stretching it in that moment and you're probably gonna hurt yourself. And so. Please be wary of any localized stretching in a joint like that. Go ahead and take a few deep breaths, and when you're ready, there is the time for you to really slowly let yourself on out. Right? Lay that foot down, leg down, lay on your stomach, lay on your back, wherever you're comfortable, go there. Just rest for a moment.
We're going to uh, stretch the quads next. Hip flexors, especially. Your quads, just so we all know, it's the upper thigh, right? The front of your leg. But the hip flexor is gonna be more towards the top of the pelvis, right? But still on the front side of the body, the upper thigh here. Uh, I was gonna recommend two poses. One that is called the half bow pose, where you use muscular effort again. Another is called dragon pose. Now, you might have to feel this out, especially uh, if you're doing dragon pose, you start feeling a lot of bone on floor pain. It's really not uncommon. Uh, you could just put uh, some towels under that knee or blanket or pillow, whatever, some kind of cushion there, but uh, I'll show you when we get there. Dragon pose though, you're gonna have one leg in front and one leg behind. It's gonna be your back leg's quad that gets to stretch me right here in the front of the back leg. So like I mentioned, bone on floor pain might be an issue. You could always just take your mat, fold it over, uh, take a pillow, whatever kind of prop that provides cushion for you, just go ahead and use that. But again, back leg gets a stretch. There's your first option. Another, depending on how you feel, half bow where you land your stomach and you just grab a foot right, and you pull it. And the more you pull, the more you get. Muscular effort is required for this one. Now I'm actually gonna flip over here for the dragon pose because I'm gonna show you some modifications. Uh, so again, it's still my right leg getting the stretch here, right? So what I have going on right now here, I have the uh, right hip getting the stretch, my left foot's in front, my right leg is behind. If you wanna modify this, uh, what I like to do is turn into my front leg. So if your left leg is in front like it is for me, turn left a little bit and see what that does for you because sometimes that's gonna increase that intensity a little bit. Now you don't have to go all the way like to the point where you're Sometimes we call it the feed me grapes pose, like if you're a Renaissance painting and you're getting uh, fed grapes, right? That's why I call it that. You don't have to go that far, but some people will. It's up to you. Actually, I felt pretty good. Uh, when I'm here, I'm not only feeling the hip flexor, I'm also feeling my oblique stretch a little bit. It's sort of a bonus, not really the intention. But a lot of times those areas are intertwined with each other. And we wanna make sure that we're taking care of our hip flexors. We wanna make sure that we're taking care of the quads. Uh, specifically for your hip flexors, um, the iliopsoas is what they call it. Uh, technically, it's two different muscles, the iliacus and the psoas major. They just happen to meet at one particular point, and that's why they call it that. Um, but any tightness in those areas can cause issues with your pelvis. Specifically, it starts pulling it forward. It's called an anterior tilt. And if, it, if it's too tight and pulls things too far forward, you're gonna start feeling pain in L5, S1. If you've ever had back pain, you've probably had it in that particular part of your spine. The L5, S1 is right where the lumbar, your lower back meets your sacrum. So again, right into that hip joint. It's gonna cause some serious issues. And aside from that, if the psoas major is too tight, that particular muscle is connected not only from your hip, but also to your lumbar spine. So if it's too tight and it's pulling things forward in your pelvis, your whole spine, is gonna go with it. And imagine how much pain that's gonna cause you. So again, stretching these areas can help prevent that from happening. And trust me, it is worth preventing because most people are gonna deal with hip and back issues at some point. So I know I said that we're gonna focus primarily on the hips, but you can't work your hips without working your spine in some way because of how deeply connected they all are. When you're ready, oh, there's your time. Just real slow, you know, let yourself on out. I usually just fall right into laying down here. But if you're in a half bow, you let it go. Or you're out of pose. Hang out here for a moment. Other side when you're ready. Uh, whatever side you are on, just make sure it is your other one. Um, I suggested dragon pose. I also suggested half bow pose. Uh, with a dragon pose, remember it's basically a lunge. You got one leg in front, you got one leg behind. Right now, my right leg's in front. My left leg is behind, and this is the one that's gonna get the stretch. And again, there's a reason why I'm setting up this way, because I wanna face the camera. It's easier that way. But again, right leg in front, left leg behind. It's the front of the left leg getting the stretch. 
If you don't feel comfortable doing this, you could always just do a half bow and lay on your stomach and grab the foot. And the more you pull, the more you get. If you're really tight in your quads, it's probably not going to matter uh, if you do that pose or not. But again, with a dragon pose, if you're doing it, um, hip flexors, really the intended area of this. I had mentioned modifications by turning into your front leg. So if your right leg is in front, turn right a little bit. And sometimes it's going to dial up the intensity. Actually, pretty much all the time it's going to. To the point where maybe, again, you're doing the feed me grapes pose we had mentioned, right? So I'm a renaissance painting right now. Feed me those grapes. I call that. Up to you. You don't have to turn so far into it. But again, that particular modification and all modifications that I give you for the most part, it's going to play around with angle changes in your pelvis. Like how far do I tilt a certain way? Does it go, does it go forward? Does it go to the sides? Does it go back? Does it do a combination of those things? And that's the secret of yoga right there. It's how do I tilt my pelvis into it to give me a different stretch? And who knows what exactly the right way is. This is why I give you options. So we can feel it for ourselves and we can personally experiment with that. Because that's the only way we're really going to figure it out. It's by trying it out. First hand experience. See if it works. If it works, hey, that's great. That's something that you can keep in your back pocket for a rainy day. But if it doesn't work, there's no wasted effort. You'll find out it doesn't work for two reasons. One, you're just too tight. Good news is you can change that, you just keep stretching. The other reason is because compression, where your bones are stopping you, your body is stopping you. And if that's the case, if compression is stopping you, there's no going past that. You have learned right there definitively that is what it is, and it's not going to change. The only thing that can change is tension and tightness. But the more we do it, the more we're going to figure that out. And if you're ready, we're going to say that's the time. Just really slowly letting yourself out. And a lot of times in the dragon, you're just going to come right on the laying on your stomach. Half bows, let them go. You, know, you do what you need. We're going to do a hip opener. That's going to be for your inner thighs. And I'm going to suggest a couple of things. One is going to be one that's primarily for the inner thighs. Nothing to do with the back. And the other one is going to have to do with the back. Uh, but I'll show the forward bend first because I'm, I'm already upright. Butterfly pose is going to be one of these choices for you. Soles of the feet together, lean forward. You get the inner thighs, you get your back. Stretch right, nice broad stretches here. If you feel any pain in your knees or in your hips, you can always play around with where your feet are. Are they closer in? Are they farther away? Um, if you're really dying to do a forward bend, and, and you might be, not abnormal, dragonfly pose is fine too. It can work around that knee and hip pain. Inner thighs get the stretch here when you spread the legs out and you lean forward. You get the hamstrings here too. This is actually going to be the only hamstring stretch that I suggest with this particular part of the practice because again, we're, we're primarily focusing on the hips today. So dragonfly could be your choice. If you want to do more of the deep hip opener, reclining butterfly. Soles of the feet together, lay on your back, right? This is the pose. And the reason why it's more for your hips is because you're keeping your hips and your sacrum level of the floor. That right there is what opens this really up. And keeping the pelvis flat here as, as best as you can, it can help reestablish the, uh, the natural position of your pelvis. Like we had mentioned, if things are too tight, like your, your hip flexors, they start pulling your pelvis forward, this is going to help put it back. Vice versa, if you're really tight in your hamstrings and it pulls your pelvis backward, this can help tilt it forward. So again, it's like a delicate game that you constantly have to play. And we have to do it all the time, right? We, the, the body is always changing. You're always tightening up. There's, there's just no way around that. The only thing that you can do to reverse that process of tightening is exercise. So if you can do yoga every day, do yoga every day. But if you don't really enjoy doing yoga every day, which I know not everybody does, which is fine. I don't take personal offense to that. 
But I do still advise you to find some kind of activity that you can do every day or activities, I should say. So like find like two, three, four different exercises, routines, whatever that you enjoy doing. Like if you're someone who likes to go run, you like to walk, you like to spin, you like to swim, you like to lift weights, you like to play sports, any kind of activity is better than no activity. So find something you can do, whether it be one or four or five different things and cycle through it. When you're ready, there's your time. Real slow, path of least resistance. A lot of times it's bringing the knees together and extending the legs out. But maybe it feels like it's a little too much. You wanna keep your knees up here, it's fine too. If you're in a forward bend, use your hands, push yourself out, lean back, lay down. Take your time, though. We'll take a minute here. We'll do one more pose, just because we have to do a back bend. And we'll wrap this thing up in Shavasana. The back bend is the last thing we have to do. Some of us did a forward bend, but most of, the, of this practice, we were indirectly working the spine. So I want to just do one pose primarily for the spine. This is something uh, I would advise you to do every day. It's called a sphinx pose where you lay in your stomach, you prop up on your forearms and your elbows. Right? This is it, this is the pose. And uh, it shouldn't be a stretch or anything. You should just feel this dull pressure right here in your lower back in the lumbar spine. Anything sharp though, please come down. Right, please don't push through the sharpness because you're gonna hurt yourself. Might not be today, but you'll set yourself up for an injury in what's called the last straw effect. And it's exactly what it sounds like. The ligament, the tendon, the muscle, the joint, whatever it is, it's at its last straw. And the next time you, you move it in a different way or a weird way, it's gonna go. So we wanna prevent that from happening if we can. Now, I do understand accidents happen. They happen all the time, but the last straw effect is something we can potentially prevent by maintenance of exercise. You can just breathe into this. Really do your best to let your stomach muscles relax. A lot of times when you're doing a back bend, your core will start flexing and actually start to pull you forward. So let it soften. And sometimes we can go a little bit deeper into it. When you're ready, here's your time, real slow. Lay in your stomach, take your time there. Probably feel like a long way away. Just rest easy, take a moment. I will say though, after a deep back bend, it's gonna feel really nice to do a gentle forward bend. So like a child's pose might be something you wanna head to. You can always do other things like downward facing dog, if you know what that is, you know, whatever you feel like you need. we're at the end of our practice. If you're ready for Shavasana, for corpse pose, I'll give you a few choices, but one of them is just laying on the floor, lay on your mat. 
You can lay on your back or your side, on your stomach. Uh, you can sit upright like you're in meditation. Just wherever you're comfortable, go there and then close your eyes. Nothing to see at this point, just more to feel and pay attention to. And as always, focus on your breath. Breathe low in your belly, low in your diaphragm. Turn your senses, your awareness within for these last few minutes. Give your body a compare and contrast. How different do you feel right now as opposed to when you first started this practice? You know, what differences have you made with your practice today? No formal ending to the practice. Stay in your Shavasana as long as you like. But that is officially all that I have for you. I want to thank you all for watching and sharing your practice with me. It has been my pleasure. Namaste.